Yeah, one member say we have to scoot out, but I want to see the recording, so I better make sure it records. So, okay, so um, my intent here is uh, to, to go through um, the uh, the slides here. I have 16 slides, uh, kind of give you an update on where the transition team is in our progress, and uh, go through the ministry site profile. And, uh, and then uh, the last slide is kind of the timeline that we're kind of on. So, so anyway, um, let's see. Well, usually the uh, arrows work here, but let's see. Okay, so I guess it's gonna work with clicking. So uh, the, these are the, the team members. Um, myself and Randy were the co-chairs. Uh, Sue Whitney, uh, Debbie Waite, uh, Paula Davis, Lauren Bell, and Carl Middleton are the rest of the team members. And uh, and just some background, uh, the whole process of the transition team and the call uh, committee is kind of two separate processes. Um, when we went through this with Rebecca Sherman from the Senate office, uh, the transition team is not called by the congregation. It's uh, basically a process of the council putting the transition team together so we can do our work. The, the next step when we get to the call committee, uh, the call committee will be voted on and approved by the congregation. So we're gonna have to have a special meeting for that. And I'll kind of go through that uh, towards the end. But the, these are the members. Um, so work to date, um, we've uh, held these group conversations uh, and you can see the dates, the 13th, 17th, 20th, 24th, 27th, 31st, so they were Sundays and Thursdays um, in August. And our intent was, is hopefully anybody who didn't have a chance to participate could um, do the wrap up session today. Um, and so uh, that's why we arranged for Randy and Kathy to uh, you know, participate in that. So it just went away. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we'll see if the uh, projector goes back on. Yeah, well, I don't know why it would shut off. Oh. Oh. Okay, well, that's, that's really unfortunate. Okay, so uh, yeah, because the problem is, is I don't know if recording this, we'll see what's on my computer here. If you're screen sharing with the Zoom, they should still be able to see it in the recording. Okay, good, good. Yeah, so uh, anyway, um, well, I'll just shut it off and let it cool down and give it another shot. Okay, yeah, and so um, before the uh, power went out on the projector, uh, we've also another part of the whole process is interviewing people in the community. Uh, so that was highly encouraged. And so thanks to Sue Whitney, who um, really um, got on top of um, checking members in the community that Agnes Day is involved with, uh, went it out and interviewed uh, six, six people. And uh, the first thing I had on the slide was uh, Pastor Molly uh, Fraser from United Methodist Church. Uh, who United Methodist Church is part of the uh, joint youth group. Uh, then uh, Jill Dabbs, uh, president of the Rotary Club of Gig Harbor. She talked to Jill. Father Eric Stell, uh, rector of St. John's Episcopal Church, who is another member of the joint youth group. Uh, Paula Anderson, who is the executive director of New Hope Overseeing Our Safe Parking Program. She talked to uh, Paula. Bo um, Bob Volbrack. Uh, long-term volunteer with uh, what is now called the Gig Harbor Key Peninsula Housing and Homeless Coalition. So she talked uh, to Bob and then Sue uh, Brayton, uh, who is the founder of Homestead Community, who bought our rental uh, house next door. And uh, they're working to remodel it and uh, have a foster care family in there. So that's who Sue um, interviewed. And uh, we have all those comments 
along with all the, the comments that 62 people have given us uh, in the group conversations. And uh, so uh, I can say one of the things that I saw in the community conversations is Agnes Day is a very beloved congregation in this community uh, for all the things we do to support uh, these churches and uh, um, various other uh, community organizations. Whoops. So um, the next thing, if you have uh, the hard copies of uh, the ministry site profile, it's divided into five parts. And so um, the, the first part, uh, I'll just mention these parts and then I'll go through each one of them. Uh, the first part is who we are as a church. The, the second part is our vision for mission. Uh, the next uh, section, part three, is leadership needs. The fourth uh, section is commentary. And then the fifth section is completion of the, of the profile. And so I'll go through uh, each one of those uh, steps. So um, let's see if the projector comes on. So now if, if you have a handout, the first page uh, basically um, uh, is the background, um, the name of our church, um, who is the contact people, um, and we, we kind of fill that out. So it's pretty straightforward uh, on the first page. Uh, we, we put in who's the chair of the uh, congregation. So Lynette's the, the president, her name would go in there. Uh, so, so it's basically our church name, address, that kind of information on page one. Uh, the second page, um, the, the first section is uh, who's the chair of the call committee. So again, the, the call committee, uh, I'll mention uh, kind of the time frame where we're envisioning that uh, will be selected. Uh, so that, that individual would go in that um, line and uh, the name, address, phone number, contact information. Uh, then the next section, uh, demographics, uh, talks about um, the language spoken in the congregation, um, in the community, and uh, basically uh, the, the ethnic uh, background of our congregation. So uh, we put that information in, um, in those line items. Um, then uh, there is a gender um, and age distribution that goes into the uh, into the ministry site profile too. And so when we were doing the group conversations, uh, when we were filling out uh, the attendance log, we were asking gender and age information just to get a little bit of the background um, on this question. Uh, I know Randy's been working on filling it out. It's like plus or minus 5%. So if you put one in there, it's 5%. Um, it's just the way it's it's the way it's organized by the ELCA. This uh, ministry site profile is something. Um, it's online on ELCA's um, national website, so that's where it's filled out. And uh, when it's completed, that's where the access to it is. So anyway, um, we also put in the, the number of paid staff we have in house. And uh, then there's a question here, distance members live uh, in church facilities uh, um, from our church facilities. And so it's, it's kind of interesting. It's break, broken down to who lives a half a mile or less, a half a mile to a mile, a mile to three miles, more than three miles. And, uh, and again, uh, you can probably guess the more than three miles is gonna be the biggest percentage uh, because a lot of people drive a long distance to come here. Um, so we'll be we'll be putting that in. And then uh, the next section is what type of community are we? Uh, and um, it's, it's pretty much uh, pretty uh, obvious we're a bedroom community. Uh, these other choices um, don't, well, and I think retirement community too. Um, those are probably one of the two top ones. And then uh, the last section um, in the demographics is what's the budget of our congregation? So uh, we'll basically just work on getting that information um, from our budget and, and we'll fill out all that information. So again, the first section is pretty straightforward where the ministry site pro, uh, profile team uh, or transition team can fill out a lot of that information from 
um, information we already have. So the next section is um, our vision for mission. So I, I see it still hasn't come back on. Um, so there's there's a lot of information uh, to fill out in this section. Uh, the first one is characteristics, which is basically giving a description of our community. And uh, there's a lot of good information that uh, we can get from uh, the school board districts in our area that gives great background on our community and demographics. So um, we're going to, you know, obviously use some of that information to fill out the demographic. Uh, it talks about the primary zip codes uh, we're in, that type of information. Then, then the next uh, section, these, these are all, um, you know, basically um, essay type uh, sections that you fill out and some of them do have character limits. So you can't go on for a whole page. Um, they're going to, they, they don't want to call pastor candidates to sit there and read a, a book. So there, there is a limit on what essay length we can do. So the, the next one trends is uh, three changes or trends, uh, trends within the congregational organization, uh, which have occurred in the last three to five years. So that, that's a big time frame or time spread, and it's right through the whole COVID mess. So, so there's gonna be some conversation there. The context is list three ways the community in which you are located has been challenged by change transition in the last three to five years. Yeah, so yeah, Phil. Gary, uh, on the trends, um, those are things that came up in the question uh, discussion groups? Yes. One of the one of the questions we had was, um, you know, basically, what were the challenges and opportunities that we as a congregation faced, and and so we we got a lot of that information. So yeah, any writing on the wall thus far on what those trends are going to be? Well, yeah, obviously, um, one of the the things uh, that came out was the whole COVID thing and the transition. That that was really big. Um, and uh, the, the other thing um, that came out was our transition from a pastoral type congregation to more of a committee structure congregation, uh, that kind of information's in there. Uh, and then it's pretty obvious we're an aging congregation. So to, to give you an idea of the demographics, when uh, I put the age and gender information in, 85% of the people that attended the uh, sessions, the group conversations were over 65 or greater, 85% of the people we talked to. So, so it's really showing that shift. And again, it's nothing unusual. This is happening throughout the, the country uh, that churches are getting older. So, so those, those are some of the trends that, you know, obviously they're there. Um, so, and again, the context, it's kind of the same way some of the interview um, information we got is, is it gives kind of the vision of what people are hoping uh, August A. Lutheran moves in the future. Uh, so some of that's pretty clear. So uh, programs uh, describe your is the next section describe your congregation or organization's current programs for uh, mission and ministry. And so uh, uh, if if a lot of you have seen uh, Linda Olson, who's here, was really instrumental in putting our minister, uh, vision um, pamphlet in a summary of all the things we do. And it's right as you walk out the door. If you haven't had a chance to get that little brochure, we do a lot. It's in there. So that, that's a great foundational document. Um, and again, with the information we got, because a lot of people in our conversations talked about all the stuff we do uh, as a congregation. Uh, goals, what are the primary goals of a uh, ministry site? Um, and then it says, please refer to any strategic, strategic uh, plan that has been adopted. So uh, again, um, we're, we're gonna have to, um, you know, work on that one because um, one, of the, one of the questions on um, the uh, group conversations was, where do you envision August A. Lutheran going in the next, um, you know, two to five years? So we got we got some feedback there that can help us uh, fill out goals because I'm not aware being on a council 
I can read we have goal one, goal two, and goal three. Uh, I, I, I don't think we have that, but uh, we certainly can use the vision of where our congregation is headed from the 62 people we talked with. And then uh, the next section is energy. What is the congregational organization really excited about right now? And uh, uh, again, uh, I think we got plenty of feedback uh, on the energy and uh, uh, we heard a lot of a lot of energy, again, what this congregation is doing with the community and with our own members uh, and supporting our own members. And then uh, the last section um, on this page is how does this congregational organization see itself as a member and active participant in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America and the Senate? So uh, again, we give some background. Um, again, I've only been, my wife and I, Kathy and I have only been here a few years, but uh, you know, we heard several comments about how this church uh, was recognized by the Senate for all the uh, donations that were given to world hunger. Um, it was the largest donation in the Senate for, for years. So, um, so we got, we got some of that kind of information and, uh, and again, we actively support the ELCA with the quilting programs, and, um, some of the other, um, programs that the ELCA has. So that, that's what, uh, the first section of our vision for, uh, mission is. The next one, um, again, it's, it's unfortunate, but, uh, again, if you have a paper copy, th this, uh, page can be a little bit confusing because it, it's got the ministry site characteristics and there's, uh, two boxes on the left and two boxes on the right with questions on the right and left. And so you got to imagine there's a line right down the middle. And so we're supposed to, you know, basically say, what is our characteristics like? Is it more like on the left or is it more like on the right? And so I, I think, again, we have enough information and background as a committee that, you know, we'll give this a shot because uh, one of the things that I'll talk about in the end is we're going to present the ministry site profile that we put together again in the same type of form to the congregation. And you can say, yeah, you're on target or you're off. It should be there. You should check that box. So, so you're going to get that chance. And, and I kind of have the, the timeline. So again, I'm not going to go through all this, but uh, again, th this is part of our task is kind of describing our congregation characteristics. Um, so then, um, again, there's a lot of essay stuff, uh, essay type questions in this MSP. So the, the next section on page six, again, if you're following along, is the, the purpose, giftedness, and the mission of uh, August A. Luther. So the first uh, one is purpose. Uh, how does this congregational organization understand its reasons, uh, a reason for being in the light of God's call to mission and service? Uh, who are you? Why are you here? And again, um, that uh, I think uh, is very clear in um, basically the, the conversations we've had with the 62 people. Um, it, it's very clear we're a congregation that cares for each other and we care for our community. Those themes kept coming out back and forth. Um, a gift in this, what are your gifts is the next one and resources for fulfilling this purpose. Uh, what are the congregational organizations top three assets and how are they being used? Uh, are there obstacles that must be overcome to be able to use these gifts and accomplishments uh, uh, or to accomplish the mission is, uh, is the next one. And again, um, August Day has lots of gifts um, with not only people volunteering their talents and skills, but they're, they're monetary gifts that support um, a lot of these programs we do uh, in the church here and in, in the community. And then uh, the last one is mission. In the light of the way you have uh, described your ministry context in the ministry site, site profile, what are the top three uh, mission priorities which, if accomplished, hold the most promise for the continued development of this ministry? And again, um, that was one of the questions. It, it was question number five. You know, what do you envision uh, August Day Lutheran Church uh, doing um, in the future, moving forward in the next three to five years? Um, so again, we got good information on 
um, there's still a great desire for um, the church here to continue to work in the community and even get more involved with the community um, and try to uh, actually hold events here that um, introduce the community to Augusta State Luther. Uh, so, Tom. Uh, just a question of clarification because I <clears throat> was talking about the Yeah. I don't know what's going on. But um, is this, and again, um, sadly, the PowerPoint isn't working, but is this, are you reading from the Minister of Site Profile page itself? Yeah. Okay. And is it a work in progress still? Yeah, it's, it's a work in progress. Yeah. So, um, uh, again, I kind of summarize our um, time frame here on the last slide. But um, yeah, so we've done these interviews. Uh, the information has been collated to date. Uh, we were looking at, uh, you know, the, this last session, if there were people in the last conversation to collate that data. We meet on Monday and we start tackling, filling out more of this. Yeah, so I'm doing screenshots, unfortunately, yeah. of the That's MSP. It's written down in this document. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So at some point, I just want to copy of that. When yeah. Of yeah. Well, so, yeah. And again, if, if you came in, I, I did mention, uh, and again, I'll show you in the last slide. This MSP will be presented in the adult form here, I think is the best format. It'll be announced. And uh, you will get to review these pages and what we've said. And you can say, yeah, you're right on, or you need to tweak it. So, so that that session's coming up in October. Yep. So, so anyway, um, so there, there's those purpose, giftness, giftness, mission sections that we'll fill out, and then um, the last section on page uh, six is again just kind of reference information: who the bishop is in our synod, um, inside information, um, uh, again contact information. Uh, our president Lynette would go in that section. Uh, references outside the congregation. So we'd have a reference. Um, uh, probably one of these community um, individuals I talked about could be on there. Another member of the ELCA roster and anyone else uh, we want to put in there as references that uh, can be contacted. So that's kind of the reference se section. Which again, if you've been in involved in getting um, or doing interviews in the business world, references are pretty common. So page seven, um, this transitions to, uh, again, if you have a paper copy to the leadership needs section. So this is part three. And so um, the first question is, uh, what type of uh, roster leader are we trying to call? So the first one is ministry of word and sacrament. That's who we're trying to call. Uh, the other choice is word uh, and service would be a deacon or in candidacy or, candidacy or first call. So again, I don't um, think we as Agnes A. Lutheran are looking for a new seminary graduate. So, um, so anyway, so we, we fill that out, uh, position type. So we would uh, put that in a uh, minimum of, de of degree. Uh, so that's pretty uh, straightforward and then full-time or part-time. So this is a full-time position. And then uh, primary uh, or languages uh, proficiencies, um, again, obviously the primary language would be English, but again, if we we're looking at a secondary and a tertiary type language, we'd fill that out because if we had a huge Spanish population here, we would probably have Spanish in the second line uh, in another language if we had uh, other people. And then uh, the next uh, line on there is what years of experience are we looking to have for the pastor we're looking to call? So it's zero to three four to nine, 10 to 15, 16 to 20, or 21 plus. So um, so those um, experience levels are in there. So the, the next section is the top five ministry tasks. And uh, it, again, if you have a paper copy, this is huge. Um, there's lots of choices here. Um, so the ministry site um, um, transition team um, gets to decide five of these kind of based on the conversations and we'll pick them out. You'll get to see them if you think they should be tweaked to a different box. We'll have that conversation in October. 
Yeah. Are they ranked in priority or just the five? It's just, it's just five. Well, there's there's another section we'll get to that uh, kind of talks about what what our priorities are. That that's coming up. And then on the bottom of page seven, because this is another one, uh, we get to select five uh, gifts for ministry. We get to select five gifts essential in the position and five that are very helpful to have. So if you go to page eight, whoops. Page eight. So here again, they list a huge list of items and uh, we get to pick five top priority on the left and very helpful um, characteristics on the right. And so again, we'll we'll pick those, and then uh, again, you'll get to review and say, "Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate." Well, see, and I, I had no idea how many people were going to come, so I made only fifteen copies. So, so here's the list: uh, help people develop their spiritual life, help people understand and act upon issues in, of social justice. Um. Provide uh, care and nurture. Uh, be active in visitation and membership of non-members. Um, be effective in working with children. Bring a sense of community among the people with whom he or she uh, works. Help others develop their leadership abilities and skills for ministry. Be an effective administrator. Be an effective communicator. Be an effective teacher. Encourage support of the church uh, church's wider mission. Work regularly in the development of stewardship growth. Be active in ecumenical relationships. Be effective in working with youth. Organize people for community action. Be skilled in planning and leading programs. Have a strong commitment and loyalty. Uh, I guess I better plug this thing in. Um, I just got the batteries running though. <laughs> Um, have a strong commitment and loyalty to the Lutheran Church. Understand and interpret the mission of the church for um, from a global perspective. Uh, deal effectively with conflict. Bring joy and good humor to relationships. Um, <laughs> be able to share leadership and work in a team. Be creative and innovative about his or her tasks. Be able to use technology and media. Appreciate culture, diversity, and language and customs and have talents in the area of music, arts, and worship. So the list is long. So we got five and five. <laughs> yeah, and so so then the next one, it's got mutual expectations. It says, please list the five primary areas of activity or focus that you wish your newly called rostered leader uh, to give special attention to during the first year Let me move. Uh, of his or uh, her ministry at this congregation organization. So some of these, yeah, they're going to translate down into there from, from my perspective, because this, this is what's important to us. So this is what we need to focus on. Yeah. So, and then the, the next section, um, the, the way this is laid out, there's um, part of it on page eight. It says, please list five ways that the congregation organization will support and encourage the roster leader during the first year in order to help him or her accomplish these things we pick. So it's on our backs to support the pastor. So so that that's the next section on the bottom of eight, and then it rolls over to the top of page nine, uh, B, C, D, and E are in there. So, um, so then uh, if you, again, have a paper copy, uh, the next uh, thing on page nine is uh, basically we put in compensation, uh, the benefits, um, professional expense uh, kind of information. And again, that's all going to be based on um, the years of experience that we check on the ministry site profile. And then we'll use the Senate guidelines to put that information in because, you know, again, there's guidelines at the Senate. If you have this many years of experience, this is the salary and benefit uh, kind of recommendations. So we'll put that in. It's uh, in the business rule that's called the uh, WAG, um, but uh, we'll put it in there. There's some other terms I won't get into. 
Um, um, so yeah, there, there's like the other thing, professional expenses, are we gonna reimburse auto travel? Of course we are. Professional expenses, first call, theological education, that would be important if we had a first call pastor and then continuing education. Um, obviously we're gonna support pastors in continuing education. So then the uh, the next thing is a comment area. It says, please offer any comments or expl explanation regarding the compensation package. Is, you know, we can uh, elaborate on that. Uh, and then there's other supporting resources. Are you able to supply the following items if requested? A mission and vision statement of the congregation organization, Printed history of the congregation, strategic plan goals, budget, annual report. So, so that is have other information. Ever, have we ever done a strategic plan? Has the congregation ever done this? I, when when I first got on the council, we had a retreat, uh, not this summer, last summer, and the intent during that retreat is to start developing um, a vision, mission kind of strategic vision and so we kind of started that conversation but boy we've had bumps along the road now yeah so um so again that could be one of the yeah that could be one of the things we want to do so she said we did it in 2000 oh okay <laughs> who has to <laughs> so yeah so that that could certainly be an opportunity it's like you know we as a congregation want to firm up our vision uh moving forward so, yep and then uh yeah i i printed out um this uh it's a section on page 10 um it's, it's called the commentary section and it we basically offer information or a commentary that will help the reader appreciate the vision opportunities challenges and nature of our ministry site uh, use this opportunity to creatively promote and commend your ministry profile uh and, and again so uh we'll add something in there because again some of this is redundant in some of the information we have because uh, you can almost guess there's going to be a lot of information on our community activity and the activities we do in the congregation uh, to support our members. So there, there's that commentary section. It's it's just part four. Um, and then uh, the last section is complete the, the uh, profile. And uh, so the, the first thing is discern process and adoption. Uh, basically, um, we're supposed to write in 100 words or less how did we formulate the responses to this? Uh, so we, you know, we'll put in there that we've uh, had the group conversations and other information we've gathered. And then um, call process administrator, they wanna know who's the, the name of the, the person on the Senate staff that would go in there. So we'll fill that out and then reference uh, recommendations. Um, so that is the ministry site profile. So Linda. Um, when I look at top five ministry tasks and gifts for ministry, you know, that really seems like the critical point that's going to help us decide who are we looking for? Mm -hmm. Who fills that out? You know, I mean, that's, those are really important. I don't yeah. think they were raised in our interviews. So how does that work? Who, who um, completes that? Well, so again, um, that's going to be the task of the transition team to take our shot at that. And, and what we uh, think it is based on what we heard from the 62 people. And then so, yeah, and so we'll we'll put it in there. And then the task of the call committee, well, at the Senate level, they look at our ministry site profile. And uh, they they do screen candidates looking at the, the talents of those pastors, do they fit this profile? But the congregation will see what you picked and have a chance to repeat that, yes. right? Oh yes. Yes. oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Again, my next slide. You will, we will pick, you will say, yeah, I think it should be okay. So we didn't, I didn't hear what Kathy had to say. Oh, well, she just, she just said, again, we're going to select those five priorities. 
but you will again have an opportunity in this same type of form oh, okay. to say, yeah, you got it right, or it, it needs to be adjusted, or whatever. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Phyllis. Be decided where you answer how many years of experience you want the past to have. How how that decided? Um, I, I think we we just basically take our best shot at that uh, based on again the com conversation. Um, yeah. In that question, so it just depends. Yeah. <laughs> it seems to me that that's the upper ground, and it depends on who the candidate is. Yeah. And that, that the number of years experience should not be a criteria at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so I, I saw the last, yeah, I saw the last ministry site profile, and uh, if my recollection's right, you pick, you picked the 16 to 20, I think, category, and you ended up calling somebody else. Yeah, so um, so again, it's kind of the Holy Spirit's work on how it goes. Yeah. I just follow up on that, but do you, are you only allowed to pick one category, or could we check all the boxes? <laughs> um, I guess that's a question we're, we're going to have to ask the, yes. the Senate. I just, I, you know, yeah. I'm not an expert in the process, but from yeah. the things you hear, it seems like our, our pool of candidates is not infinitely large, and I'm glad I would be concerned about prematurely limiting it based on something as arbitrary as you. Yeah. Lynette. Yeah. I would say to you that the Senate is very knowledgeable about who I would say is. And when they're looking at candidates, they're also going to try to choose candidates to interview with us who they feel would be a good, uh, a good fit. It's not always a perfect solution, but, but they're going to do some of that as well before they send somebody that they don't think, irregardless of their age and their experience, somebody that they don't think would be a good fit for us. Yeah. So, uh, because, you know, in past times we had, uh, last, when we called Pastor Seth and Stephanie, I think we had seven or eight different pastors that we interviewed. Um, and some of them used the call committee to look that right away for whatever reason and decided that this interview would not be interviewed. So, um, but the Senate will always yeah. think like that. Yeah, so uh, looking at that question, it doesn't say check as many as you like. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, again, as Lynette says, it's kind of the, the work of the Senate and the Holy Spirit, because who, who knows? Yeah. I was, I was just thinking um, yeah. that... Um, there's a lot of comparisons in, in, in life, like what are we like and what are we not like and so forth. And if we were, and I don't mean a fundamentalist church, if we yeah. were an evangelical church, I can't imagine that the word growth or church growth would not appear. It's nowhere in here. And I'm wondering if uh, people might think the word growth is kind of uh, Oh, really? I mean, what do you think? This is a business? Are we capitalists? Uh, I miss it. Now, you could see that it's under under uh, ministry task, evangelism and mission. But when I turn the page to um, top priorities and so forth, not one of them is evangelism and mission. Even though they're one of the, the possible top ministry perhaps. Yeah. And it kind of worries me. Yeah. Well, again, uh, you know, a good point that the the ministry site profile doesn't have that growth flavor. But I can tell you the response is we got people have growth, younger families, evangelism on their mind. So that's not going to be missed in what we comment on. Yeah, it, it's there. Yeah. Um, other questions? Because I think um, I have my wrap up. Okay. So, um, so anyway, um, the um, 
Let's see where my cursor went here. I'm just moving your beautiful faces around here. So they're not blocking my slide. Okay, so um, the the, uh, the next steps, obviously we're gonna finish collating and the, the intent was, we didn't know if there would be additional people in the group conversations today. So if there were, we would take all that information and add it to what we already have. And uh, so uh, it looks like nobody uh, joined in today. So we have that task completed. So um, then uh, we're gonna work on uh, completing the ministry site profile based on what we've learned in those 62, uh, from those 62 people in the group conversations. So that, that task is going to start tomorrow evening at 6.30 with the transition team. And um, so uh, we have a lot of work before us to, to start filling in this information. So again, our goal is then uh, to present the draft MSP back to the congregation uh, for your feedback and further discussions. And so right now we're targeting, uh, I, I emailed George and said, what's your plan for the next adult forms in, in October? And so it looks like we can have the 8th or the 15th of October. So the transition team will have that conversation, which date we want to bring this back to you on Monday. Uh, so that's going to be on the, the agenda. And then um, after that feedback in those discussions and any tweaking we have, then the ministry site profile goes to the uh, council and the council reviews and they have to approve it. That's part of the process that uh, the ELCA says the council needs to do the final approval. And so we're targeting that in the council meeting on October 17th. Um, so that's when the council meets. The council is now meeting every third Tuesday of the month. So we've uh, backed it off uh, a week so the financial folks can get more information and their financial reports done instead of a rush in a week and a half or uh, meeting every two weeks. So then once the, uh, the council uh, proves it, um, then the uh, final version is uploaded into the ELCA's website. So that's where this thing resides. And then uh, the, we'll call a special congregation meeting to approve the call committees, the next task. And so again, the constitution, we have to give notice two weeks in advance of special congregation meetings. So that word will get out uh, that we're gonna have a special congregation meeting. And I would vision if we keep to this timeline, we would target October 29th. That's the last Sunday of October. So we'd have a special congregation meeting um, to select the call committee. So one of the uh, tasks that the uh, council has is putting the call committee together. And so we've started some of those conversations already. What's the thinking be behind having a call committee separate from the transition committee? I'm assuming you wore you out. And it was so really Yeah, I, I don't know what the whole um vision is there other than maybe getting more people involved i i don't think there's any rule that yeah i mean it's constitution it's written in our constitution so that, that they're separate and, and that we have a call committee uh, but i think your idea of more people involved yeah is, is the general purpose yeah Linda. Oh, when we met with Pastor Rebecca too, she talked about the different people who are involved in those, and they have very different talents and gifts. And the uh, transition team, for example, good listeners, intuitive people who are connected, pay attention. And then the call committee more maybe big picture, looking at what the congregation needs and maybe that will. So I think they're different. Okay. Yeah. And and one of the other, the other things that uh, again I have the uh, the transition team and call committee documents from the Senate and in one of the uh, the big emphasis for the call committee is make sure you have a call committee that represents the whole congregation. So again, that's going to be our task. So uh, uh, we want a broad perspective and not only a narrow perspective because that that's not good either. So. Um, so then um, 
once the congregation um, approves the call committee members, um, then the work of the call committee begins. And uh, my first understanding of that process is Rebecca Sherman, uh, assistant to the bishop, will come and meet with the call committee. And just like she met with the transition team, and she'll outline, this is your task. Um, and then they get to go for it and uh, start planning. Yeah. But the potential candidates are all selected by the Senate. Or could somebody just decide to apply? Um, well, uh, again, I'm not I'm not familiar with this Senate. I was the VP of the Senate over on Eastern Washington, Idaho, part of Wyoming, part of Oregon, for ten years. the The process there was um, once this ministry site profile went to the Senate, they generally submitted three names at a time to the call committee. They didn't submit. 10 or 16 or whatever. It was three at a time. And so the call committee got to interview those three. Um, it's my understanding the uh, Senate will have po uh, possible pastors that are interested in this position. So they'll certainly look at those. Uh, and that could be part of the first submission. Because the process is that everything goes through the Senate. Yeah. So a, a pastor from Great Falls, Montana doesn't apply directly to us. No. Everything goes yep. through. Every, everything goes through the Senate. Yep. And sometimes um, you may know a pastor that you think would be a good candidate. You can submit that name and to the council of that would be or to the press yeah. or call me. That would be sent to the Senate to then verify that that person is actually looking for a call. So you could do it as well. Yeah. So I envision once the call committee is together, they'll get that kind of information and then they'll announce probably on a Sunday that if you have a pastor candidate that you would like the Senate to review for this potential call, um, please give it to the chair of the call committee. So th those are kind of the steps. Yeah. yeah. And also remember, we don't also have shared communion with uh, other churches. So it's possible that we could call a Methodist minister or an Episcopalian or with those those congregations or those denominations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Larry. I, I didn't hear anything that um, assures me that there is some kind of, I'm going to use the word scientific, I don't mean it. Uh, to scare people away, but uh, I, I haven't heard any any scientific method of weighting the top priorities or the very helpful priorities. So I uh, am, uh, I think it's a daunting task you're taking on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, filling those out, coming up with the top, you know, top five or whatever. Um, and I, I was I was just going to offer that maybe when we do the the review, maybe we resort to uh, uh, a democratic type uh, approach to some of it because I know I know that some people uh, speak can speak much more forcefully and uh, mm -hmm. stop their feet or whatever. Uh, for item 12, let's say. But but in reality, most of the people don't care about item 12 that much. So I, I was thinking that, you know, I once was a school teacher and people raised their hands and uh, uh, I'm just offering that as a, a possible uh, Aid. Yeah. Uh, when you come back with and and uh, are trying to say, yeah, this you, you hit this right on, or no, it, it needs to be over here. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Uh, so, Larry, my vision for that is when we bring this back, especially those priority sections, we will bring the top collated information too. You know, so congregation said. Community involvement is highly important. Um, so we can we can you know basically state some of those top priorities that fit 
um, what we select. So it, it's not a total mystery in how we came up with those. Yeah, so we'll, we'll definitely keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, so most of the collated information so far, um, you know, there's always the one-offs. So, but uh, there's generally three or four real high priorities that people want to see. Yeah, in every one of those questions. So, thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you. And thank you for the yeah. for all you've done. Yeah, I appreciate. It. Yeah. <laughs> And stay, uh, stay tuned. I hope um, we have this many people to see what we come up with. Because okay. it's great to see all of you. Yeah. Um, we have to. Uh,